So if you're a gardener, then undoubtedly at some point you come across some issues with your plants similar to this. So here I've got a wonderful example of a perennial merit collard. This plant is about two years old. And unfortunately, over the last few weeks, I noticed an issue start to develop on these leaves. We've got some yellowing around the edges of the leaf. So yellowing leaves on your plants, also known as chlorosis, is actually a very treatable issue in most situations. And no, we're not talking about in autumn when leaves start to turn right before they fall. We're talking about nutrient deficiencies, disease, pest issues, and many other things that I'm gonna go over on this video. So with this leaf, you can see again how the yellowing is mostly occurring around the edge of the leaf. This is usually a really solid indicator that the plant may have a potassium deficiency. There's a really easy way to deal with that. One way is to actually just bury citrus rinds and such around the base of the plant with some good quality compost. More times than not, that's gonna to help to take care of the issue. But this leaf right next door here, not only has yellowing around the edge of the leaf, but it's also coming from the center stem and throughout the whole leaf actually. So this is looking more like a nitrogen deficiency. So another good solution that should probably fix this issue would be to just give it a general garden fertilizer, something with an NPK value in the range of about 555. That's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And I think that's gonna take care of this issue here. You ladies enjoying that abundant tree kale? They sure do enjoy having a nice variety of greens growing right here in their chicken run. So here's a young orange tree, and right now it's looking rather healthy. All the leaves are a nice dark green, glossy finish. And that wasn't the case just a couple weeks ago. The leaves were starting to show signs of yellowing. So what I did in this case, I identified the issue as being a magnesium deficiency, which is pretty common with citrus trees. So I applied some Epsom salt around the base of the plant, watered that in, and it seems to have taken care of itself in a short amount of time. So yellowing leaves on your plants will often be a result of nutrient deficiency. So pay close attention to nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, iron, sulfur, calcium, manganese, zinc, boron, and copper. Some other issues to be on the lookout for if you start to notice some yellowing leaves would be pest issues. So we're talking about things like aphids, white flies, mites, thripes, even gophers. So be sure to check the underside of the leaves, see if you see any pest issues starting to develop. If you've got holes in your garden, obviously you know you probably got a gopher issue. Another common issue, especially for younger plants and store-bought plants, would be transplant shock. So if you just got back from your local nursery and you're going to plug those plants into your garden, there's a few things you could do to minimize those effects. One thing would be to wait till the latter part of the day to put those plants in the ground. That way you avoid those plants getting hit by full sun, which is really going to send them into a shock. Also, if you can wait till an overcast day or give those young plants a little bit of shade, that's going to be very helpful. Another common practice for avoiding any type of transplant shock would be to feed the plant a little bit of liquid vitamin B1. Just do a drench around the plant's roots at the time of transplant. Another potential issue to look out for if you notice yellowing on the leaves would be too much or too little light and sun exposure. You want just that perfect balance. So depending on what type of plant that you're actually growing in your garden, be aware of how many sunlight hours that that plant requires in order to thrive and make sure that you're hitting that mark. If it's not getting enough sun, you're gonna see some issues develop. On the other hand, if you put a plant in the garden that requires part shade, but it's in full sun, that's also gonna create issues. So just be aware of that. So I'd say probably the most common issue why you're gonna see yellowing on your leaves is in fact overwatering. Now underwatering your plants can cause issues as well, but overwatering tends to be what people lean towards when it comes to you know putting their garden on a watering cycle. Especially if you don't have a well-draining soil, more times than not, what's gonna end up happening is those roots never get a chance to actually drain themselves of those excess waters and they end up staying with wet feet, which can cause many different issues, including yellowing of leaves. Disease is also something that will come up from time to time. And there are some plants that are especially susceptible to these issues. Plants like tomatoes, green beans, potatoes, 
can suffer from different diseases like blight. And there are different organic sprays and such that you can apply, just look into it. But one thing you wanna make sure that you do with those types of plants is when it comes time to remove them from your garden, get them out. Don't put them in your compost pile. That can actually proliferate the problem, spread it, and it'll come back year after year. So put it in your green waste container, throw it away, it doesn't really matter, just don't keep it in the yard. So to help you better identify what might be the issue causing problems in your garden, I've gone ahead and put a couple links below this video to help guide you through that process. Lots of information and illustrations so that you can correctly identify what might be the issue. Well, I guess that about wraps up the most common issues to be on the lookout for. If I missed anything, be sure to let us know in the comments below. We're still all learning here, uh, just trying to do the best, growing the best we can. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you're having a great weekend, and I'll be talking to you again soon. Take care. As you can see, we're now in tree collard broccoli season. I absolutely love breaking off and eating these edible florets on the tree collards. Of course, I leave plenty of them to flower for the beneficials and to help with some pollination for my seeds that I collect out here. But man, these are so tasty and taste really similar to broccoli, even a bit sweeter.